Man, welcome to another episode of Curious Mike. I'm here with my guy, Bones. My guy in peace. Appreciate you on the podcast, <laughs> my boy. So. Uh, man, so I remember when you got drafted, uh, you came in the you came in the locker room, said what's up to everybody, and like we clicked. I think I really appreciated like your authenticity, and I noticed that just from the uh, from the jump when we first met. Yeah. Um, and then you just proved it over and over. Like you, no matter what's going on, you're always gonna be bones. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're in the game, it don't matter who's in the game, you're gonna be bones. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just feel like we clicked, so I appreciate you hopping on the podcast, my brother. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, definitely being drafted by the Nuggets, it was definitely huge for me. You know, it was a, it was a blessing. Um, you know, just overcoming what I overcame, you know, in my life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then being drafted, twenty six pick, you know, by the Nuggets, it was big for me, man. It was it was everything. I didn't really know what to expect. Mm-hmm. You know, coming to Denver, I thought it was really cold, but I got on the uh, the plane. And uh, I had seen like the sun was out. I'm like, damn, this is different. It's yeah. little, it seemed like it's hot out. Yeah. But um, you know, the first time I came to the you know the arena, I think the first person I saw was you when I walked into the uh, the little, little food room. Uh, yeah, the food room. Yeah. I'm like, what's up, and people? We definitely just clicked from there. Um, you know, Gene with vibes and Gene with souls always. You know, connect with Gene with souls, and ever since then, it's just been like a lock for sure. No, for sure. <laughs> I remember, bro. Like, I realized you were a killer, and like. It was your rookie season, right? Mm-hmm. And I think we were in training camp in San Diego, and I'll never forget this. Oh, really? I think I came down and, and like hit like a hezzy pull up, but mm-hmm. I think you were on the side, like like waiting for me to pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, I hit the shot, but you were like, Mike, like I could do that too. <laughs> you passed the I was like, okay, like he's cold, like, and this is your rookie season, like yeah. I was, and you just were so confident, bro. And so yeah. it was like, it was a joy to uh to watch you to watch you play and like mm-hmm. be your teammate, you know, and then so. I think I kind of was hurt um, during the time when you, when they were talking about the trade rumors and when you, uh, that's cool. Oh, that's, that's his phone. Yeah, I think I was hurt um, during the time the trade rumors came around. So I really didn't, I really didn't know what happened. But Thanks. man, now you're, you end up going to LA um, and I've been tuned in obviously, but how has everything been for you over there? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, yeah. It's been lovely, man. It's been dope. Uh, obviously coming from, you know, Denver, a situation where, you know, I thrived in, you know, I was having fun playing over there and stuff like that. But I just felt like it was just, you know, needed change for me, mm-hmm. um, needed different scenery. And, um, you know, obviously over here in LA, it's, 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 I think it's a, you know, a beautiful thing for me. Uh, I'm learning another under, you know, four future Hall of Famers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just staying ready, staying patient. You know, obviously, the, you know, last year I came around February time. Um, you know, it was, it was kind of hard just to learn, you know. Uh, it, it wasn't hard learning the plays or learning, you know, I mean, obviously, if you're a hooper, you know you're gonna fit yeah. in with with, uh, with whatever. But just having to move from you know one state to another, one team to another, you know, having to learn uh, the new uh, staff, new players, everybody names, the play yeah. calls, yeah. it's it's tough, you know. And and obviously, on top of that, you're still trying to perform, and you know, still trying to you know you know earn that roster spot as well too, um, coming in from another team. But I feel like it was, I feel like I did that, and uh, obviously this year, you know, just playing well off the bat. And then, you know, a trade happened and, uh, you know, you just get bumped down and out of the rotation. But I feel like it's, you know, it's, even though it, it may not look like it's a you no know, good thing for me, I still look at it as a good thing because I'm still yeah. learning under four future Hall of Famers. And I know my time will come, so right. I'm really not, you know, too down on it. Obviously, I want to play, but I ain't too down, though. Yeah, no, nah, you always smile and you always have, have had a good attitude about everything, even, you know, when things... Like in Denver, you know, you mm-hmm. know how the NBA is. Yeah. Um, even in Denver, when things weren't going good, you always Facts. maintain a smile. Mm-hmm. And so I've been checking up on you even in L.A. just because even times last year, you weren't playing as much as you were supposed to or whatever. And now, um, but you have always just maintained like the attitude, the good attitude. And yeah. you're young, bro. You're going, to, you're going to end up doing your thing. But that leads me to a question. Like, you played so well. You know, obviously in, in the off season you you be killing every every run. Yeah. You know, and you just go and, and you know, you're like the highlight of the summer. Everybody be looking at the Bones Highlands uh <laughs> Pro Am videos or whatever. How do you maintain like is the NBA for people that don't know the NBA, is it as fun as the summer? Like is basketball as fun to you in the NBA? When you're playing or not? Like is it as yeah. fun as when you're doing what your you're thing saying. in, yeah, in that's the summer? That's a that's a great question. Um I would say it's it's kind of different, um, you know. But at the same time, I feel like if I had you know the keys, or I, if I had the 
you know, just go out there and just be yourself and, yeah. you know, with no, you know, leash on you, no minute, rest- no, no minute thing yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it would be the same thing that's going on in the summertime. Yeah. But the summertime, you just playing, you just playing. I feel like everybody's so in tune with me. You know, right. They love seeing me play right. and just be free. And, you know, they be like, man, if he just had, you know, the leash off of him, if he just go, he would yeah, be. Everybody knows. Yeah, yeah, everybody know, you know. But, you know, at the same time, I'm just waiting my turn, waiting patiently. But, man, I ain't going to lie. The summertime, you know, who's be so fun because I could just really just right. go out there and just just be me, you know. Even though I'd be me in the league too, but it, it's more in spurt. Like, it's, it's like the whole time, the whole the game, whole I'm game. just wild. You're going to somebody's head. <laughs> I'm just wild. <laughs> did, you, did you always, like, okay, so obviously nowadays a lot of people grow up with trainers mm-hmm. and they grow up with, you know, they go Facts. through drills. Your game is so unique mm-hmm. because you the way you grew up where you grew up hooping you yeah. know on a park um it, how did that because most like hoopers that grow up that way don't make it to the nba they don't Thanks. know how to fit into structure and yep. all that mm-hmm. how did you kind of grow up and how did your game like how is it the way it is because the way you handle the ball is so unique the way you you know the showtime the flashiness Facts. like is that just the way you grew up or, or how did you grow up hooping? <laughs> yeah uh that's definitely the way i grew up um i grew up on a lot of park basketball um a lot of recre- recreate recreational basketball yeah recreation basketball how you say it <laughs> but you know i grew up on a lot of that uh i don't see just playing playing going to gyms you know playing one-on-one two-on-two yeah. three-on-threes you know literally all day like Sun up to sundown, you know. But at first, like it was kind of hard to get on the uh, get on the court, you know, because they like you gotta wait your turn, you know. You're younger, you know. And I'm just on the sideline, just practicing my moves, you know. I'm just shooting the ball in the air and stuff like that. But just watching, just live basketball, you know. I've been taking so many notes and stuff. Just, just, just young. And I knew like once I'd be able to get on the court, I knew I'd be ready. But man, just how it just translated to the uh, to the NBA. Just honestly in the gym and just working. Um, yeah. you know, try to like simplify some things. You know, you know, obviously it's. It's sometimes you can be a little flashy. You can show your, you know, your flashes of, you know, being fancy here and there on the fast break. You can right, throw right, a dime. Right. You can turn around. You know, just get the crowd into it. That's how I always been. You know, I never yeah. wanted to like change that or you know let somebody change that part of me because right. I'm a very you know entertaining player. A lot of people like seeing me play. They love watching me. So it's like I never just change that because oh this doesn't fit the criteria of you know a coach like this or right. you know somebody don't like the way I play. Da da. Nah, that's that's never been me because at the end of the day, it's like. I'm not going to change who I am. You know, this is what got me here. Yeah. I'm not just going to change who I am now, you know, just because I made it to the league. Now I'm going to forever be me. So, you know, that's definitely how I grew up, though. You know, a lot of park basketball. Yeah, nah. <laughs> like I said, bro, that's one thing I admire. Like, can't nobody tell you, like, your confidence and just the swag you play with. Mm-hmm. Can't nobody tell you you're not the coldest. For people that don't know, like, me and Bones would have shooting contests after every shoot around. <laughs> I'll cry. Uh, every shoot around, we would, we would do our little shooting contest. Me and him. Some sometimes other people would join, but mm-hmm. they never would win. But I could say Bones is one of the <laughs> only people like I've shot against. It's you, Steph, and like maybe one other person. Yeah, probably they, Trey. Trey, yeah. Trey. But like they can consistently beat me. Like he was beating me <laughs> most days. I would be so hot. <laughs> But, like, as flashy as your game is, like, yeah. it's still very, very polished. Yeah, 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 um, for sure. Who did you grow up, like, who did you grow up idolizing? Who did you try to model your game after? Um, you know, that's a, such a tough question. Because uh, I really never try to, like, modelize my game after nobody. Yeah. But I love watching hoop, though, you know? Yeah. But, like, I love taking, like, flat, like, game, like, or, like, moves from different players and stuff like that. But I never went, like, oh, yeah, I just want to be just like him. Like, yeah, this is yeah, my, yeah. you know, my idol, da da You know, mm-hmm. that's never been me. But a guy who, like, I always watch was Hot Sauce. Hot Sauce <laughs> okay, that always makes sense. guy, you know, I just watch. And as somebody, like, I come home from school, you know, I eat a bowl of cereal, you know, I turn him on, <laughs> on the phone, I prop the phone up, and after yeah. I finish eating my cereal, I grab the basketball and go in the mirror, and I just practice all his moves and mm-hmm. stuff with his big shirt on, you know, the big shirts he used he to wear. He was cold. He was cold, though. <laughs> fact, he was cold. So that makes sense then yeah. why you hooked the way you hooked. I used to always just watch him, bro, and I used to go to the gym and try to practice his moves, and they was working, but, like, I ain't want to be too <laughs> much, like, you know, doing way too much. Yeah. yeah, you know, but I still, like, try to, like, try to amplify some of that in my game and that gave me like my flair like my swag you know like yeah. you know it, it gave me that nah i can't nobody like fuck me on the court type right. shit. you know that, that that gave me that vibe though yeah, it's a video that went viral a youtube video I, I just seen it like 
Like, I didn't even know about it until I started playing with you, but it's a viral video of you playing one-on-one. They were some bums, but you was going <laughs> at dudes. And I think you were younger, and they was getting hot. Yeah. Like, uh, it's, yeah, y'all can look it up. Bones Island one-on-one. I definitely it's, know which one you talk about for sure. I just was watching it the other day. <laughs> but, like, how I'm... old were you during that? Like, was that, like, a normal thing for you to just go to the park and be playing one-on-one with dudes and the cameras be out and all that? Yeah, so, like, it's a it's a big backstory to that. So, you know, for that, for everybody who don't know, this was a video that went viral. I was about 17 years old, but it's mm-hmm. a league called Check Rock League. Yeah. And it's a league that I played in growing up. A lot of, you know, kids where I'm from, Wilmington, Delaware, even, you know, Philadelphia area, you know, Tri-State area. A lot of people come down and play in the league. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it was, it was one game that's going on and we were waiting till it was done. And it was like me, it was like six other people. And it was the two, uh, the two owners that, you know, uh, made the Check Rock League up, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we just conversating about basketball, you know. Then they got to the comparison game. And I'm like, I'm staying out of it. I ain't saying nothing. I ain't saying nothing. I'm staying out of it. <laughs> you know, but then I got bought up. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, that's like, <laughs> nah, y'all tripping. I'm not compared to nobody. And they just kept saying, yeah, you know, I can beat him one on one. You know, I can beat, you know, Bones one on one and da da da. And I'm like, you tripping. It's a court right here. Like, we can go check out right now. Like, yeah. It's a court literally right here. We walked on the court, and the first guy, you know, I just feel like, you know, I don't know. I think for like his pride got in the way. It did. It did. <laughs> he got he in the way. Playing way he, bro. <laughs> his pride got in the way too much. But the second guy, who I seven though, yeah. like he, his pride was way higher though. Like he knew, like he just let the, you know, the people where he was from. You know, he's from Philadelphia, but he yeah. let the people like get in his ear. Yeah, go out there and you know, play. And they was trying to play mad hard. They mad hard. Foul, you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you know, this not how it's not gonna end how you want it to end. And I just be like, nah. And I didn't even know that like this is gonna be a viral video though, you bro. Didn't? I was just going up there, just being myself, all yeah. the people around that you know, was watching, everybody just being there. So we didn't know that the the guy who recorded the uh the video, we didn't know he was gonna drop it or he was actually recording, yeah. you know. But it got so much attention and stuff. I'm like, nah, he he, he definitely gonna drop this. Nah. And ever since then, that joint just blew up, bro. That video is okay. But you know what's crazy though, bro? A lot of people like they like, oh, that's the guy from the video that went viral. Like, they look at me now, like, wow, that's the guy from the that's video. How, that's he how made viral it to the league. Went? Yes, bro. Like to this day, like that's the guy from the video that that went viral. I'm like, damn, they remember that video? That's yeah. crazy. Nah, bro. it's a cra- it's it's a hilarious video, bro. Because it's just like you now, like <laughs> the way you talking crazy to dude. And they were so hot, like oh they were God. so mad, bro. <laughs> they definitely was. But nah, up. nah. Back to the league. Like, mm-hmm. I was watching a podcast. Um, I think it was Emmanuel Moutier uh, on someone's podcast. Yeah. And he was just talking about he lost his love for the game. And, like, you've always been, like, you can see in that video, you can see even the way you hoop now, your yeah. love for the game. He was talking about he lost his love for the game because of how political mm. the league is. Mm-hmm. He was like, I would be killing somebody in practice every day. But the coach tells me I'm not going to play uh, – Right now, and like obviously, we've talked about Tyloo. Tyloo's from from Missouri. Like that's my guy. Yeah, that's like uh like he's from he's from thirty minutes down the street from mm-hmm. from where I'm from, and he's he's the most chillest dude ever. Yeah, <laughs> he is chill for but sure. But do you feel like um not just in your situation, but now that you've been in the NBA, yeah. how political do you feel like it is? Like, is it dudes to you like every day could be killing in practice that literally don't play in the game, or do you think the best players always play? Um, yeah, it's definitely a political game, um, but it's something that you just can't control, bro. Right. Like, you know, I can be killing every day in practice, you know, but it's just like, it's just going to go how it go because maybe somebody been there, you know, years or maybe on a contract that's way bigger than yours. So it's just going to go the way it goes. But I mean, it's something that you really just can't control. Maybe he got a couple years over you and you yeah. just getting in the league or you just your second year, but you killing though. But he on a crazy contract, you know, but he playing over you, playing, you know, mad minutes. But it's something that you, excuse me, it's really something that you just can't control, bro. It's, right. it's And it's tough, you know, because it's like, man, I wish I was playing a little bit more, you know. You know, I feel like I deserve to play a little bit more. You know, I'm yeah. already killing it with the minutes that I'm getting. Why can't I get a little bit, like 10 more, you know. Yeah. Like, like, I feel like I deserve it, you know. But, man, it's definitely a political game. But it's just something that you just can't get caught up in, man. You just got to stay, like, level-headed, you know, just and stay out of that, And you never let man. that affect, like, like your joy? Like, yeah. you, 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 you don't let it affect your joy? Nah, not at all. You you know me, bro. Like, yeah. I ain't going to let nothing <laughs> shake me, bro. It's like, but at the same time, it just be kind of tough, though. It do, because, like, you know you just want to play, bro. And that's me. Like, I just want to hoop, you know. So it's like, ah, this political game could definitely get tough. But, man, it's right. something you just really can't control, bro. It's really something you can't. Facts. Nah, hundred percent. Nah, you. Um, I mean, you know, like you a star. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows. I think I was watching PG's podcast, and he was yeah. talking about 
the way you play, how you are as a star. And you got, like you said, y'all got four Hall of Famers right now. Like, yeah, bro. And y'all, y'all still figuring it out, but whether it's there or somewhere else, like you're going to blossom. Mm-hmm. So it's never any, any stress in that area. Um, I want to, I want to, uh, turn to like your faith because you, you do have an unshakable joy, which is something I've always appreciated about you. Yeah. Like, even like when you were with us, mm-hmm. I'd be down sometimes. You would, you would keep my spirits lifted if someone was going to, even if we, even if you weren't playing, yeah. you still were cheering me on mm-hmm. in the game. Thanks. But you, you tweet or you, you put on Instagram very boldly, like about mm-hmm. your, uh, your faith. Yeah. Like in God and mm-hmm. just how, how important that is to you. Um, has that always been like an important part of your life? And is that kind of what keeps you kind of like level headed through everything? Man, yeah, man, that's a, that's the biggest part of my life, honestly, man, because I've been through so much. But, you know, Jesus has never, you know, forsaken me at all. Like he mm-hmm. always been there for me, like regards, like how, you know, impossible something may seem, how like unextraordinary something may seem. It's like he's just always there for me. And it's like I can never like, you know, turn on him no matter if like things get, you know, worse for me or Mm -hmm. maybe uh i don't like how something's going you know or maybe some life problems that i'm going through i just know like i'm always be you know straight because i got you know god on my side and it's never gonna make me like turn away from you know him because something not going my way you know i feel like a lot of people nowadays like they they quick to like you know why me or you know why am i going through this you know but not even knowing like maybe this can you know help you you know on your path going forward. The and adversity that's can like shape you. Yeah, exactly. No, and I feel like that's what something I'm going through right now. Like mm-hmm. this right now, it's shaping me right now. You know, it's bu- building resilience in me. You know, it's building patience in me. You know, and it's building like just even more higher character. You know, so it's something that I definitely, you know, appreciate right now, even though I want to play, but at the same time, I know God is, you know, strengthening me, yeah. you know, getting stronger off the floor, you know, and stuff like that. So it's, I feel like it's really, it, it has helped me, but my yeah. faith definitely never shake though at all. Never, nah. You um, we were talking about this before the podcast started, just about how like um, the fans, even mm-hmm. in Denver, um, how how people can be so for you, yeah, yeah, in yeah. In, in life in general, mm-hmm. any NBA player deals with this, yeah, yeah, that people can be so for you, but as soon as you do one thing they don't like or they perceive something that's not even how it was, mm-hmm. they turn on you, and I think we've talked about a little bit. Even the Denver fans, because you were a fan favorite. Like every time you <laughs> hopped on the floor, and you're going crazy. Yo. And just the fact that, you know, you receive backlash or any mm-hmm. negativity. I asked uh, AG this in my podcast the other day. How do you deal with like the positivity and negativity? Because mm-hmm. like there's been so much positivity surrounding you, but then yeah. like one thing goes wrong and now there's some <laughs> negativity. Do you, how do you deal with all that? Um. So honestly, man, I just be taking it like, all right, they, they just showing love because I'm killing, you know, yeah. or they, you know, at this moment, they showing me love, but I don't let it like get too, you know, head over heels or like, ah, I'm, I'm so in, you know, with the, you know, how they treat me and stuff like that. Like, obviously I love it, but you, it always like, you know, something to go wrong. They just going to turn on you. It, it just like, <laughs> right. it just, it's just what happens. No bro. It happens to literally like, you know, Hall of Famers who played the and stuff like that. The, the, the best players bro. So it's like, of course it can happen to me. So I, I don't be too like locked in on it of course like i appreciate you know fan bases that you know take me in and like really cheer me on they appreciate my game they appreciate how fun i have on the floor you know speaking of denver fans you know when i was over there you know i checked in and they they weren't like rowdy every time like they love watching me play but obviously the trade went down and happened now it's everybody just like hate me like you know but i i feel like they don't really i feel like they don't really hate me they still got love for me but it's just the fact that i'm just not there anymore it's making them kind of like damn like we just gonna go at we just gonna keep you know going at even stuff like that but i still got love for denver bro like it took me in with open arms like i never just say like f denver like that's that's never you know me that that won't ever come in my mouth they took me in open arms every time i checked on the floor i had fun you know so right yeah i don't know it's it's something that like you just gotta (laughs) You just got to just hoop, bro. You can't really get Take into the whole fly. fan yeah, thing and all can't. that. You know, you just can't get into that, bro. Facts. You talked before. You was, like, uh, talking about what has shaped you into this person is is the things you've gone through. Um, I remember, yeah, back in San Diego when we was just chopping it up on the training table. I'll never yeah. forget this conversation. Like, I don't know how it came up, but you talked about what you went through. And you was telling me, like, mm-hmm. this is what... This is why I am. This is how I am. The way this is why I smile so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit to people? Because I think, like, more than just a basketball player, like, yeah. you inspire so many people. Because Facts. and people don't even know your story like mm-hmm. that, but I do. And I yeah. and to see you smile through that, to see the way you take care of your your mom and your mm-hmm. your nephews. Yeah, like people don't even know where all that comes from. Mm-hmm. Can you a little bit talk about 
yeah. um, the incident through mm-hmm. high school? Yeah, facts. So uh, back in 2018, you know, I, did, I had went through a house fire tragedy. You know, it happened. And, um, you know, I was watching March Madness in, uh, in my room. And I was on the phone with one of my friends. And, um, you know, I'm just literally just chilling, just laying back. And it's like, a, I forget what day it was. Um, you know, it was like a Saturday or not. I forget which one of those days it was. But, you know, I'm just, just chilling back. And uh, it's one of those days where everybody just be, you know, chilling in the crib. Like, nobody bothering each other. You know, everybody just resting and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm watching the game and stuff. And um, just chilling. And, and I just just get up out my get up out my bed because I start smelling, like, you know, smoke just surrounding just, like, my, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like just outside, like, and I'm like, damn, like, what's that smell? But you know, like that type of smell is, is normal for, you know, where I grew up, you know, and her is normal. People think it's a barbecue, you know, it's, right. it's a cookout going on. So I'm like, yeah, it's normal. So I just sat back in my bed and uh, it started getting more intense, intense, intense. I'm like, damn, what's that smell? Like, that's not like a barbecue. It smells like something burning, like something on fire. So, you know, I get on my bed and I had, uh, you know, went to my door and I hope I had opened my door and I just see all these flames just bursting. I'm like, oh shit, what the hell going on? So I instantly had to close the door and I had uh went to my room and I had to just sit there and just like think like damn what the fuck am I supposed to do? And mind you, what's already clicking in my head is my grandma and uh my two baby cousins is in the other room. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn, like how can I get over there to the room and see, you know, try to save them or you know, see what I can do, what plan I can do. But you know, in movies, you can just think so, you know, they got all this time to think, mm-hmm. you know, they <laughs> they go from one scene, you know, of, of the fire or something and them try to, you know, escape that and then they go to another scene and then they come yeah. back to the fire and then it don't work like that, you know, it's uh, that was something that like, man, I really had to like think fast, you know, right. with such little time and, uh, you know, I'm just sitting down, I'm trying to, I'm trying to really figure out how I'm going to do this, but I live in an old house, so I'm like, the windows ain't going to open, like, them, them windows never open. So I'm like, yeah, this, this, it might be over with for me. So I went to one of the windows to try to open, but like it didn't open. And now the, the smoke and everything is really getting like inside the room. Flames is starting to come in. The walls is getting hot. As I'm touching the windows, it's a little hot. So I'm like, ah, like, you know, I touched the first window, it didn't open. Now I'm really like cloudy. Yeah. I can't really see, you know. And uh, I try to touch the second one. It's hot. I'm trying to open it. I'm like, nah, I, I'm just going to go. Like, this is really not opening for me. I dropped to my knees. I'm like, God, like, I really don't understand why this is happening to me. Like, I feel like I did everything I was, you know, supposed to do. I feel like I'm a great person to people. You know, I always, you know, give. You know, I never really, you know, I don't ask to receive from anybody. You know, mm-hmm. I always want to do my deeds, you know, in your in your honor. So I'll just be like, dang, man, this is, you know, crazy to happen to me. And, uh, you know, as I just sit down, I'm just praying. I'm like, man, if it's my time to go, I'm just going to go, you know. But I just hear that voice in my head, like, get up. Like, I got you. Get up. And it's like, it's not your time to go yet. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, that window is going to open to you, the third one. So I'm like, it's no way, bro. It's no way. So I get up. I get up. I go to the window. And I just try to just open it. And it just open. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. So I open up. I see somebody outside. I'm like, my house is on fire. My house is on fire. Come save me. He's like, you got to jump. You got to jump. I'm like, I can't jump. It's too high. You know, yeah. This is a three-story floor house. I'm like, I cannot jump. You got to jump. We need you. You are our last hope. Yeah. When I heard that, I'm like. Damn, bro, like, I really am the last hope from Wilmington, Delaware. It's so small. Everybody depending on me to make it and stuff like that. So I'm just like, all right, fuck it. But I, I, after he said that, though, lied to you not, I went back in the room, got on, you know, uh, my knees. I'm like, man, I'm just going to go. I can't jump. It's too high. Just hear a voice in my head. God, just get up. Just get up. Just get up. I just said, fuck it. Went out the window. I just jumped head first. I had to turn my patel attendant. I hit my knees on the bricks. I tried to get up and crawl. I couldn't walk. I tried to call to the car, you know, to uh, to the lady who had a phone. I'm like, call my mom, call my mom. My mom was at a place called Main Event. And, uh, you know, she was there with, like, uh, a couple of my other uh, family members, cousins and stuff, just having, like, a fun day. I forgot my mom's phone number. So I'm like, I don't know what's going on. My head's spinning. You know, I can't walk. I can't do anything, you know. So I'm like, damn, I forgot my, my mom's phone number. Anybody know my mom's number? It just clicked in my head. I call my mom. You know, number literally just clicked in my head. It was so crazy. I called my mom. The house on fire. She drove so fast to, back to the crib. I just see my mom just come. What's going on? House on fire. Da, da, da. My mom there with the baby, with the baby cousin, stuff like that. You know, her uh, nephews. And uh, that shit was just so crazy, bro. And then their mom, she came from McDonald's because he had got food for them. 
and she came from McDonald's. She seen the house on fire. She dropped the McDonald's to the floor. I just see her try to run in there to try to save her mom with her uh, her her sons. I was like, damn, this shit is crazy. Then once it uh it all like probably ten minutes go past, I had seen my grandmother and my baby brother walk out, not walk out, but uh, get carried out in uh the ambulance uh thing. I mean the um the little walker thing, the mm-hmm, stretch, mm-hmm. little stretcher thing. I just seen, you know, just all of them just covered up and just charcoal. I'm like, damn, like, this is, like, crazy. But it was such just a, a like, a tough thing for me, man. Even to this day, like, it's, it's really been, like, hard. You know, sometimes I can't speak about it. Sometimes I can't. Some, it, every, every time I speak about it, it's so hard. Like, it just still be, like, flashbacks in the back of my head. It's so hard to get my words out, you know. It be tough, man. But, you know, I never, like, like, just to this day, like, that's why I'm so big on, you know, speaking on, you know, God and, you know, having that faith in God. Because that, like, I'm really not supposed to be here. So, you know, I know, you know, my calling is, you know, bringing people back home to Jesus and believing in him and believing that, you know, whatever you've gone through, you know, it's always a brighter side. He always can pull you through. So that's something that, you know, I know it's my calling, but I, I do that through basketball. Bro, like, every time I hear that story, like, it just, it, it's, it touches my heart. Not not just because of what you've been through, but but how you turn that around, yeah. bro. Like I don't I don't know too many people that would take that mm-hmm. and turn it around into what you've turned it around to and become the person through it that you you've become and like yeah. just giving people back at the crib like like just hope and mm-hmm. and people just how bold you are about your faith like yeah. I, I forget what game it was, and you had the whole hood there, bro. Yeah, like, and oh, they, the they was game. all behind you, bro. I was, you it was like 50, it was, how many people was it? Bro, oh, it was so wounds in there. Bro, and I was just like, the fact that this dude, like, overcame what he came. I just, Five bro, fighters that, was there, too. That Never story is like, man, people, that's like a story from a movie. Yeah. Like, is it, is that... Like, part of the reason you and just your mom and, and your nephews are so close. Yeah, like, bro. Like, it, like we just all best friends, bro. We, like, closer than close, bro. Like, I really, my mom is my best friend, bro. But, like, you know, people see me with my little nephew. You know, I call him my baby brother. He's really my cousin, but I call him my nephew, my baby brother. Like, he's just everything in one, bro. But I really call him my angel on earth because he survived the house fire. He has the burn, yeah, right? Yeah, the, on his face, burn. yeah, on his skin, too. He's He was the one that survived the house fire. My grandmother was covering him, but the other one had uh, passed away. You know, his brother, he passed away. But, you know, by the grace of God, you know, Izzy had survived. He had he got a big, like, scar on the side of his face. But, yeah, he survived. And he was only three weeks old, bro. So, like, can't nobody tell me that, you know, God ain't real at all. Can't nobody tell yeah. me that. And I'm just like, damn. Like, to this day, he just like me, bro. Like, smiling, you know. He gives so many people joy. Like, you would never know what he been through. You would never know what he overcame, you know. And it's like, damn, he just like me, bro. But that's another reason why, like, man, like, we really so close. And when people see it through, you know, the media or people see it in person, like, yeah, he really doesn't play about them. Like, they all so close. <laughs> so what's so what's through all of this, like, now, like, through basketball, you just use basketball as, like, a vessel for to inspire? Is that what you would say? You're, yeah. You're- yeah, literally, you know, just to get my story, you know, heard to just different people across the, just the nation, yeah. bro. Like just trying to reel in people to, you know, Jesus Christ, man. You know, I, like it's, we in end times, bro. So I know, you know, it's almost, you know, rallying up. It's so almost I'm, a rap. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just trying to use my, you know, my story, you know, with my gift and just try to, you know, tally in as much people as I can to, you know, home to Christ. So that's something that I'm really just, you know, taking pride in. Well, you inspire me, bro, like, because you're right. I agree with you that this, the time and the age that we're in and the fact that nowadays good is pretty much looked at as bad and yeah. bad is looked at as good. Good like, is insane, bro. bro. I can get on social media and the things that people are, like, glorifying is good mm-hmm. are literally evil and evil is good. And, mm-hmm. like, that's what it talks about in the Bible is end times. So, like, even just talking right now, like, you inspire me to want to, like, help bring people in. And that's why, like, this podcast to mm-hmm. me is important because like I could have a bad basketball game and not feel like doing a podcast. But if people listen to this podcast mm-hmm. and, and they hear our stories, because yeah. we're two people that have been through a lot of adversity. Yes, like for I sure. should not like for me in my story, I should not even be in the NBA either. Like yeah, yeah I was I was the number one player in high mm-hmm. school, but after the three back surgeries mm-hmm. and now you know, coming back from that, like there's guys that, that are done after one. Yeah. And there's guys, you know, the, the brace that I'm mm-hmm. playing, like no one in the history of NBA has even attempted to play in a brace. Yeah. Like that. And I'm trying to hoop and it's painful. It's hard. Like yeah. university is hard, but the fact that it inspires mm-hmm. someone like, Facts. I feel like our purpose should be to get like 
our story out there to get people to keep going. But like you said, the main thing is bringing people towards uh, mm -hmm. towards Christ. So like, yeah. I think the fact that you st shared your story and, and people get to know you, like, um, that's that's the most important thing. It's hard to keep that perspective though. Like, when yeah, it's hard to keep that perspective. It, it really like, is, but you know, it's. It's something that I just take pride in, bro. Like, it, like I really take pride in just trying to, you know, reel people in, man, just with my story. But, you know, I know this is a podcast where you ask me a question, but I know you just been through a lot too, bro. Like, just yeah. for everything that you've been through. You know, even when I was over there in Denver, I had seen you, you know, recovering and stuff. Yeah. You know, before, you know, you had signed your, you know, your big deal and stuff like yeah. that. I'm like, you know, Mike is in here trying to, you know, get himself going and get back. But, you know, how was that, you know, for you as far as, like, just trying to, you know, your back injury, but on top of that, still, like, you know... Wearing a brace, you know, right before you about to go to training camp and trying to like, because you didn't play a season, you know, or, yeah. Yeah, or you, you didn't play like the whole season because the season just started, didn't yeah. happen, you know, and then just trying to get back out there. Yeah, nobody could tell me that God isn't real yeah. either. But like when people ask me for like a story on why, I say like the 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 contract thing because yeah, like I've I've hooped in this brace or whatever, like I've hooped and I've mm -hmm. um, done like well, like obviously I'm still trying to grow, still trying to get better, still trying to heal my body, but. I signed that contract right before I had another injury. Like, and you know, yeah. in the NBA, like if that injury had come, because I didn't play the whole season right after I signed the contract, and everybody talking about, oh, it's the worst it's contract right. in NBA history. <laughs> you know, people talking crazy. Hey. But if I had gotten hurt maybe three weeks prior, prior, yeah, then facts, bro. boom, that that big contract. And I think the reason God allowed me to have that contract, and mm -hmm. it's, sometimes it's annoying because sometimes I never even cared to. Yeah. have mm -hmm. money like that. Fact, yeah, I'm so the same way, bro. I, just, I always bro, wanted to hoop, but now like hoop. once you sign a big contract, <laughs> people want you to live up to it and they yeah. expect you to be the like consistent every game, mm -hmm. not knowing what you're going through off of the court, not knowing what you're... So that has been kind of hard because mm -hmm. people don't know like yeah. how... how everything i've gone through how, yeah. how and much still trying to you know overcome that to too as well yeah but like i think no one could tell me that god not real because he allowed me to get that contract because he knew for me i've you have your gifts yeah one of my gifts is like being generous so yeah yeah facts i've been able to use my money and i'm still trying to think of more ways to um use it like yeah, in, a, yeah. in a way that god mm -hmm. would be happy with i've been facts. able to help my family been mm -hmm. able to do this and i never was trying to hold it on to myself but the hard part is like man people just it's the it's the people that don't understand <laughs> don't be understanding, bro. And it just, it just, it's and annoying. Was... <laughs> they be like, they be like, yo, you, you sign this big contract, you supposed to do this, that, this, that. And it's, but it's like, bro, you don't even like. I didn't even ask for this, but I would have hooped for free. You could have given me a. You didn't got. You didn't even have to give me any millions of dollars, and I still would have. Still want to hoop, bro. But, but now... this is something that they just don't see and don't understand, bro. It's, you know, they looking from the outside in and not really looking at right. you know, the inside and really what, you know, we go through on a daily basis, you know, what we're really dealing with, you know, and try to overcome still to this day. Like, nobody know how painful this, you know, still to this day, how that's feeling, you know, your back and you know, your foot. They just, they just care about, oh, he need to go out there and perform. He need to da da da. Which they not even understanding. You going out there, you sacrificing your body, you know. Right. Which you know some people don't even like to do. They sit out the whole season until they 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 right. Until they know? feeling perfect. They feel it perfect, game, bro. Yeah, like, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But like I salute you for that. Just going out there and just you know trying to sacrifice your body because I know what you're going through. But you know fans that's not paying attention to the game or not right. paying attention to you. You know as a person, they just looking through the TV. Oh, he he missed all these shots. He da da. <laughs> but then when you're making all these shots, they nowhere near to be found. So it's like then you what the, you gonna say the now? Next, then you the next <laughs> best. You you, you yeah. it's crazy, bro. Man. It's it's pathetic, bro. That's why like I don't get into all that, bro. I just let people just be dumb, bro. I don't care, bro. I can care less, bro. bro they fans for a so reason, bro. Crazy, bro. That's why they call it fans, bro. And like you, you made the point earlier. Like you could be the best player in the world. You could literally be. Well, I don't really see people talking too crazy about Nicola because he he just well he don't even be on social media. But yeah. like I see people talk crazy about airplay. Mm -hmm. Giannis, Bron, mm -hmm. KD, any player can get talked crazy about. So it really is just about um just taking it in stride and dealing with the highs and the lows, like. We at the end of the day, we're blessed. Like, mm -hmm. who who cares what this person is, exactly. is, is in their crib typing on the phone? Like, who really is is yeah, worried about I, what they're saying? I don't saying? get into all that. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> all that just be clickbait, bro. I don't get into all that. I just stay in my lane, bro. They got it. <laughs> right. They got it, bro. Well, yeah, man, I think it. I think this this has been like super inspiring. Like, I don't like to 
keep people on the podcast too long. I just, yeah. when I get people on here, I have specific questions that I want to ask. Yeah, I get yeah, there. for sure. But I think for me and you, we, we bond over the fact that we've both been through adversity and come out the other side. We're really both not supposed to be here like mm-hmm. after things that we've been through. Yeah. Um, and you, 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 you inspire me to, to continue to put my message out there. You're very bold with mm-hmm. yours like yeah. on, on social media. And I feel like that's something that you rarely see now because people are so worried oh, about man. being canceled or yeah, they come off facts. too strong or, <laughs> you know, the day and age we live in, people are so like, uh, uh, man, people are out there now, bro. bro so if you, you, if you, if you are one way like they, you can just get, and you've never been someone who cared about mm-hmm. that. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. That's why I do this podcast. Mm-hmm. I want to. Say what I feel without. I'm not worried about stepping on anybody's toes because yeah, we facts. we never going to change like our opinion. Yeah. So I appreciate you getting on here and yeah, I like and this podcast, saying what bro. you need to say, Great bro. Job, man. I'm glad you're doing this, man. It's something that you know because a lot of people don't even know. Like they just think, oh, we just supposed to just do basketball. It's basketball, 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 basketball. That's not how it goes. Because we made it to the league, that's not how it goes. Shut like, up and dribble, nigga. Isn't yeah, that what, isn't like that. that, that. <laughs> isn't that what the comment said? <laughs> Like, <laughs> shut up and dribble. <laughs> I don't want you to say that. We put the, me and AG put the parlay clip on here. Uh, put the parlay clip about, like, man, like, Yo. I asked him, like, bro, do you ever trip about the comments of people talking about the parlay and people mm-hmm. talking about, uh, oh, you messed up their parlay and you lost the money? Uh. And we put that, we put that on, on Instagram, yeah. and I'm expecting people to be like, man, like, people shouldn't be on that, whatever. I seen the comments, shut up and dribble, nigga. <laughs> I was like, yo, are you kidding? these people? Bro, they are- ruthless, bro. They don't care, bro. <laughs> they really don't care. But they just think we both are just, just, just literally just play basketball. Like we have voices too. Like we yeah. have things that other than basketball that we're, you know, we're into. You know, for you it's podcasts. For me, you know, it's making music and stuff like that. And yeah. Just, 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 just trying to just, you know, let people hear my mu- my message through my music. But you know, that's something that you know I, uh, I salute you on too, man. Just starting a podcast and just getting people on here and like yeah. you know letting them, you know, you using your platform to you know help me get my story out there. That's something that I appreciate too, bro. Yeah, Thank no, you for having me for, for sure. real, bro. Now, now, real quick, because I didn't want to touch on the music real quick before you dip. So you 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 who, but you also do the music on the side. Is that something like um, therapeutic to you? Are you trying to get a message out there? What what is the whole music thing about? Because you're actually nice. Like, yeah. You know, remember I was singing your song. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes, bro. So what's the whole music about? Oh, man. So like, you know, back, you know, 2018, you know, with the tragedy thing that I was telling you about, you know, what happened to me, you know, my family, I was on like house rest, like bed rest, basically. Like mm-hmm. I couldn't like leave the house. You know, I was recovering, you know, with my patella tendon. I was down for like six, seven months, bro. And I really couldn't do nothing. But I was in the crib with all my boys and shit. So I was just chilling. But I always had like a voice where I can like, you know, sing and like harmonize beats and stuff like that. And yeah. uh so I'm like, man, maybe I can give it a shot. But like my homeboys, they could like, they really know how to rap. Yeah. So I'm like, ah, right, let me try this hook thing. I'm going to just make the hook and y'all make the verses and we're going to see where we go from there. So, uh, you know, I just start writing hooks down and um, it just went from there. And a lot of people like, man, like this John hard. Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> we rock with this. I was yeah. flowing, bro. But it was like 2018, 2019. We started doing shows, bro. Like getting <laughs> paid for shows. <laughs> Like we back was going, at the crib? Yes, bro. We was going around the whole Wilmington, bro, getting paid for shows, bro. We was turning it up, bro. Like, really? yes, bro. We was having the ball. I'm in there with the brace on with the crutches <laughs> performing. <laughs> so, bro, I was going, I, I ain't gonna lie, I had I had a lot of fun. Even though like that was a, a very low moment of my life. Mm-hmm. Like I really had a lot of fun though, like 2018, 2019. But that really got me into the music though, bro. Then I dropped a single and it went crazy. Which enough, one is bro. that again? It's called We Gon' Shine. Uh, yeah. What's the one I was singing that one day? Uh, uh, it might be. It might be. Is it the new one? Is it? If it's, nah, is it's it? the older one. I think. Uh, uh, I got. I got. I got to look it up. But where do you want to take the music? You want to like actually like. Uh, this is like a real thing you do. Or yeah, it, yeah. Because like the message that I put in my songs, bro, they're, they're so inspiring to other people. Like you know what they're going through, and they can relate to to me through my music. So yeah. it's like. Damn, like, I feel what he's saying, I, you know, just the background, how I came up and stuff, you know, what I've been through in my life, you know, just putting that all in, in a song. They like, mm-hmm. yeah, like, that's something I can listen to, you know, because I really don't sound like, you know, uh, I sound like a real rapper, bro. And they like, <laughs> <laughs> you do, no like damn, this music is really yeah. cold, bro. So I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm going to just keep putting music out. I haven't dropped the album for like a year. They was on my ass about dropping the album. And then bro. you so put the thing people, on the gram, the little clip, and people was going crazy. Yes, bro, the little uh, the scar video that I had dropped. But 
yeah, they they were going crazy over the music, bro. They love it, bro. So I'm gonna definitely just keep going with it. I feel like it's gonna get it's gonna be very worldwide. I can't yeah. wait to so many more people hear my music, bro. Especially when you when you get back and you're killing on the court yeah. like you're going to very soon. Like, Facts. And then you're doing the music on top, bro. Keep keep sharing your message. Mm-hmm. Like you're, even though your story is so painful, like like that is that is an inspiring story, bro. And it's a testimony to God. Like Facts. God says, like mm-hmm. your testimony will bring. People's testimony will bring other other people to him. Mm-hmm. So that exactly. is that is, you know, you can you can really do that, bro. But Someone I appreciate take pride you for being you, dog. And I appreciate you. I know you were scared to hop on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I, hope I, was I, scared. <laughs> I hope I didn't ask you too many crazy questions. Nah, bro, it was perfect, bro. You. It was perfect, man. I had a dope time here, bro. Sure, yeah. thank you for that, bro. Sure. Curious Mike out. The yes, sir. Yes, sir. My God, dog. It's a great John Duff fact. Bro, like I appreciate done, man. Yeah, you, Yeah, bro. for sure, man. You my guy. I ain't gonna lie. I really don't be doing podcasts, I know. Bro. Cause Cause it's, but it just always blow up, bro. I know, And bro. you know everybody you, does everything for clickbait, bro. It's, everything. You know, I'm not finna put, oh, Bones Highlands talks about, <laughs> yeah, about, about, about you know. Like, oh, nah. my God. I, just, bro, I really wanted to get you on here. To, the main thing was, like, your story, bro. Because I know mm-hmm. it's not something you really talk about a lot, but mm-hmm. it is. It is like, bro, you can change people's lives yeah, with your facts. story. Bro. I feel like once a lot of people, like, were over here, they're like, damn, like, a lot of people took to this day, like, damn, that's, that shit's fucking crazy. Like, the, what really made it, like, like viral when we played in uh, Philly, bro, and all the people came, and, you know, I had, you know, explained my story, but I had dropped, you know, tears, you know, in the press conference. Mm-hmm. You know, I couldn't hold it in, bro, I just dropped tears, bro, and that really like blew up man a lot of people had caught up to my story and like damn this kid is like inspiring it's, yeah. like it's no way he's still gone and still smiling he's just a joyful kid and shit like that i can't that. believe that bro like yeah. you, literally just, you literally just was in your room chilling and then you look out the door and the flames are Marks, just man, i've never seen nothing like it in my life bro just imagine you open a door bro and it's like it, are you seeing this orange blue and like red? isn't that the craziest That's, thing yeah that just looks like some movie shit because i watch movies bro it's like they got all the time in the world, bro, to like just do all this fucking thinking, and it's yeah. like you don't have that time, bro. I probably was in that room for like three minutes, bro. And then you just was ready to give up and just yeah, bro. I was gonna go, bro. I'm not I gonna can't lie. Believe that, bro. I was gonna go. Like the whole room was just cloudy and just full of like just black smoke just coming in. I'm like, nah, but you no. Know, God's voice is so powerful, bro. Like, like you heard can, it. You yes, heard it, bro. I swear, I was sitting there on on my knees, bro, just ready just to go, bro. I just I was like, damn, like, all right, if it's my time, it's my time. Like, you know, I I feel like you know when God gets his time to people, it's like you know he's calling them home. So I'm like, all right, it is what it is. Like I'm just gonna go, but bro, his voice so powerful, bro. I just heard it in my in my head, bro. Just get up, I got you, like. Just get and up. then the reason your little nephew survived was because. Your My grandma, grandma was hovering over him. Hovered over yeah. him. She's burnt charcoal, mm-hmm. and then he survived. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right over top, bro. He said three weeks old. He was three weeks. Yeah. I just can't believe, like, the smoke inflation. That's crazy. God, it was so crazy. Like, literally went to the hospital that night. Like, my grandma, they, she, they didn't, like, uh, say she passed away yet. I think it, like, got to her, like, almost the next day, like, the middle of the night. It said she passed, but, like, I just kept hearing my, my like, my nephew, he's, like, he has a chance to make it. Like he's a lot. Like I'm like, I'm like, wow, this is fucking crazy, bro. Like, but they said that my uh, my other baby cousin had passed, but we literally had one more. Just like, just here. That's just the grace of God, bro. Like, hey, it's who, just who crazy. ran it? Was it the am- was it the ambulance that ran in there and got them? Or who yeah, was, or was yeah, the your- ambulance ran in there and got them. But the, <laughs> it's like the. I live like literally down the street from the uh the fire station. They took so long to get there. I'm like, bro, like I swear to God, I can walk down there. Like I'm like, bro, it's literally two blocks away. I don't understand what the fuck is taking so long, but they took forever to get there. But yeah, when they had walked out and walked them out and on a little stretcher thing, man, I, that shit was like really scary to see, dog. But I'm just glad, like I have like you know you know little Izzy here to like, cause he don't really know, but like he asked me like. You know, we survived a fire, da da. Like, and he don't really know what he really overcame, though. It's just like, kind of, yeah, he five now, yeah, yeah. He don't really know, though. I'm just like, damn, like, he's starting to catch on a little bit. So I know eventually, though, he gonna ask me, like, you know, what happened, and you know, cause he be like, oh, I, I, I survived the house fire, I, I'm da da, and I'm like, damn, like, how the fuck do you know this, like? He he catch on though, but I know eventually though he gonna like, yeah, yeah he, bro. Yeah. Everybody loves him, bro. He still too. Oh god, he remembers your name, bro. Yes, bro. He don't forget nobody's name, bro. He dead ass remembers your name, bro. 
He is crazy, dog. Like, everybody on the team, he don't forget nobody's name, bro. Nah, he cool. He like, you know, shine your old team, the Denver Nuggets. <laughs> you, you play for the new team, the Clippers. 